is time for This Week in Location-Based Marketing. If you can believe it, we are up to episode number 66. We're recording this live between Asif and I on February 26th. That is a Sunday. We're back to our regular hours. It's also Oscar Day, and we are coming to you during the Oscars. That's what we do. We don't watch the Oscars. We create content this way. My name, Rob Woodbridge from Untether.tv, and with me always from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Take it away! Asif Khan from the Location-Based Marketing Association. You'd think they know who we are by now, right? You should, yeah. You should. But if this is your first time, I'd like to remind you every once in a while, if this is your first time listening, there are 65 other episodes that are jam-packed full of information, predictions, and analysis of the location-based marketing world. And this is where we dissect, decipher some of the news that's going, that has happened in the past week that you should know that's very important for you. We go through some of the announcements, some of the deals, we sit down with a guest, and then we talk about a little bit of a resource about what, what, uh, what you should be reading or what you should be watching when it pertains to the location-based marketing world. Today, no different. We're going to jump into that in a second. But Asif, you're heading off in the morning again. So by the time you're listening to this, Asif will have been probably awake for 17 hours and have traveled where? Where are you going this time? Just New York. So it's, it's a short flight. Just um, New York. Just New York. It's uh, it's only an hour. Yeah, anyhow, uh, yeah. So I'm uh, heading into New York. Uh, got a couple meetings tomorrow, and then on uh, Tuesday, I am uh, one of the speakers at the um, <clears throat> Digital Marketing Strategy Conference, which is uh, an annual thing that happens for the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International. They're called. Uh, it's a big long name. Another association, but basically the Hotel Travel Tourism Industry Association. Um, you know, ha having their sort of annual one-day digital discussion and summit. So, yeah, should be fun. New York's not that bad, and it's not over Valentine's no. Day or any national holiday or yeah. anybody's birthday, is it? No, not at all. That's good. All right. Well, it was a relatively busy week last week. Uh, you know, we should we should jump right into this stuff uh, simply because. Um, I want to get back and make sure that I see whether it's Brad Pitt or George Clooney that wins the uh, you know leading male Oscar. I really, I really don't know. It's tough. It's a nail biter. So this week we've got some great news around uh, Google. Some questionable news around Google. Got an interesting campaign from Toyota. Uh, we've got a bunch of partnership deals uh, that are going on. We've got a launch of a product. Uh, my guest today. The guest today is uh, Damien Patton, who is the founder of Banjo. Remarkable story. Uh, it's a little prequel preview of what's what's going to be up on Untether later this week. We got a bunch of funding news, some acquisitions, and. We've also got a great re resource from Flurry that I think we will probably talk about for about an hour, and it's just going to be sure. me ranting about it. It's about uh, mobile ads, and uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit of a while. So why don't we just jump into the first story? This is this is so surprising that a company as as advanced technically as Google is that they would come out with this product now when we have proclaimed 2012 the death of the check-in. And Google launches Latitude Latitude leaderboards. I, all I can say is WTF. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. And uh, I, I just don't I don't get it in this day and age where we're as far along as we are in in location services and check ins and all of that to now come out and say you know we've got a point system and you can compete with people around you and see how you stack up against your friends who are following you. Uh, uh, unless all of a sudden that they, there's there's some going to be some real uh, rewards tied to these points and to this competing because there isn't in Foursquare, uh, that would be my only you know sort of saving grace for this kind of thing because otherwise I just don't get it. it just doesn't make any sense why now why only Android you know why limit it, to, you know, it just I don't I don't get it and so, not even to, tied in yet to Google Plus but they're talking about that it might be shared on Google Plus but right but why. You know, this is the gamification stuff that Foursquare was doing three years ago, and they realized that it was probably not enough to entice people to use their service. But here's Google thinking, well, didn't they own a company that did this? Wasn't it called Dodgeball? Wasn't yeah. that it, Didn't that turn into Foursquare when they rejected it and they shut it down? What are they doing? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like I said, unless there's going to be some sort of real connectivity and, and real rewards tied to you know where you stack up against your friends, I, I personally don't get it. Now, I mean, I think there you know the possible other direction I could see with this is there there is a big play this year. I think for on the TV side, Google TV and all of that. 
And if they somehow can connect that in and have a sort of an in-home gaming experience tied to points where you're competing against other people around you, okay, maybe. So, so, so I guess what I'm saying is, is the, the reinvention of the, uh, you know, the um, uh, bar gaming network that we used to do over trivia and all those kinds of things where there's local leaderboards, yep. um, potentially we could see that in the home. But I don't see it on just a pure check-in, you know, Android play like this. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make any sense at all. And if they're going to do that in the TV side, just go buy Miso or buy something else. You know, buy, yeah. buy a company that's already in that space because that's what these guys do anyways. We'll yeah. see in, in our funding and acquisition news. They, mm -hmm. they, they just buy, right? So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a puzzler for sure. If anybody out there has any more insight as to why Google would get into this space, or you think it's relevant, uh, let us know. Reach out at untetheredgmail.com. And uh, because this is just, it's a head scratcher. They owned this company. They owned Dodgeball. You know, they owned all these guys, and then they let them go, and now they're recreating something for, like Foursquare. It just seems silly. Seems fruitless, if you ask me, and especially with the minds at Google. What are they thinking? So it's got to be something of, it's either it's either we're missing something huge, and, and we're just... And then they don't even want to talk about it because apparently ABC tried to get them to comment on it on, and, and they basically uh, refused to return any phone calls. Well, they're so embarrassed. They have to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. yeah, anyways. So if, if anybody out there, you know, if you're using it, let it, let it, you know, I'd love to hear from you. We'll, we'll bring you onto the show. We'll do it live even. just For sure. Yeah, yeah. please. If anybody's using uh, Google Latitude leaderboards, I don't want to say it, but you're a loser. All right. Story number two. Um, this is this is interesting. Maybe maybe I I I don't know if I, I can agree about this, but um, agree that it's it's good for a car. But you know, picture what is this? Picture that you 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 uh, you go to the furthest extremes in Belgium, um, the wildest river, the highest cliff, or the tallest tree, and you and you basically what check in from there, and you get a discount on a car on a on a Rav Four. On a RAV4. So, yeah, so this is a, a special edition Toyota RAV4 Black Edition, it's called, uh, in Belgium, as you pointed out. And so they're basically trying to make, uh, instead of just handing everybody the discount, they're basically making you earn the discount. And so what happens is is you got to go around, as you said, to all these um, you know strange and, and uh, hard-to-get-to places in Belgium um and sort of discover these places and i guess that maybe sort of fits with the theme of you know you could be doing this in your rav4 but you're not yet because you haven't got the discount um but anyways you go to these places you check in and um every time you check in so there's an app you have to download by the way uh, to do this yeah um that they've put out and so every time you check in at one of these uh predetermined places you you uh, you earn so many dollars of discount towards the rav4 black edition and the more places you go, the bigger the discount that you get. So it keeps accumulating as you move along. So kind of an interesting thing. And, and I guess what, what I like about it is is that, as you know, Rob, I work with a lot of agencies and a lot of brands you know, as a consultant. And over and over again, you know, we can talk about all the amazing and wonderful things that are happening in location and you know, all the cool and really innovative stuff. But a lot of times they just want, give me simple, give me something really easy that we can start with and get going on. Um, and you know we can go from there and this is an example of that I would say some agency worked with Toyota in Belgium and said let's just do something really simple and here it is and it uses location obviously you gotta go there check in and do these things and you get a discount so there it is simplicity is great especially in this industry we need more of simplicity because complication when you start to put it inside of the consumers hands they gotta be able to understand how this works and and yeah. I, you're right I, I do like this I'm not, I'm not sold I, I love the comments there's a whole bunch of comments out there you can google this uh, this story the video's fun too I like the video yeah the video's great it's a you know a guy in you know, you know and an outdoorsman um, yeah. but the comments are, are like um, so that's great but then you have to drive a RAV4 that kind of stuff. It's pretty funny, right. what, you know the uh, the response. I love, that's what the internet is so great for is is the pithy comments. But simplicity is is absolutely what I love about this as well. I, I'm not so sold on on the fact that it's about a car. I don't know what the the largest discount you can get, but if it meant that, listen, if I'm hanging from a cliff uh, and I get that Rav Four free, why not? Why right. not? And in North America, you know, the Toyota Rav Four is a great. They have the one great commercial, which is. The, it's an extreme guy climbing a, up a rock, and you've probably seen this in Canada, probably in the states as well. He said he's climbing up a rock, and he's like grunting, and he's pulling himself up. And there's this guy with 
a couple of kids and he's glowing up the same rock and and they they pause and they look at, over at each other and the guy that was grunting a second ago had like the barbed wire tattoo around his arm yeah. and he's like hey uh nice tattoo and then he just kind of out climbs up past him and funny ad but i think that they're trying to portray themselves as an extreme company and, and uh maybe this will help well, like I think all, all the guys that are sort of in that category, you know, try try to come off with that image of, you know, take this thing anywhere off road and up the highest mountain and wherever. So yeah. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't take my car. I spent too much money on my car to to go and take it to the highest mountain. So Toyota, I, with this Rav Four campaign for their black uh, Rav Four special edition in Belgium, pretty cool. Check in from the most extreme place and get discounts. But you have to download the app and you have to be in Belgium. I, I would say look for this to be a you know as a test and maybe brought across into other countries third story uh yeah. this is this is interesting I, I, like almost a match made in heaven but i think anybody that that uh that you know jump tap uh, partnering with place iq is a story but i think anybody who understands what place iq brings and uh you know i think this is a logical 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 partnership yeah so i mean jump tap uh you know is a Ad, ad network, mobile advertising, uh, play, uh, place IQ is a uh, fantastic company for uh, location-based data uh, analysis and um, targeting. And so, you know, when you combine mobile advertising with local data, uh, you know, as you say, it, it's it's sort of a match made in heaven. And you know, I think the interesting thing here is is that um, you know this is really about when you look at Jump Tap's customers and all the brands and retailers that they've been working with. You know, that ability just to you know, sort of like what we talked about with Maponics a while ago, you know, that ability to have those kind of preset, you know, um, data points and, and geofences and be able to kind of target people within areas and, and have all this other sort of what looks like unstructured data around everything and, and, and give it some structure and give it some focus becomes really interesting. So, Well, I sat down with uh, with Duncan McCall, who's the uh, yep. CEO and co-founder of uh, – Great Place guy. IQ, yeah, incredible, incredible um, episode that we did about all of this kind of stuff. So, if there's any interest around that, just check out on Tether.tv. It's one of the more recent episodes. Um, Dun Duncan was a great, a good sport, and this makes sense when you take all that data and you have all this anonymous check-in and location data. Um, you, you're going to be able to siphon a lot of. Um, inference out of that and that inference is what's valuable is that when you put one and one together and it equals two this is really where the power of this uh, of all this data goes and it's all anonymous so it's very yeah, powerful it, anybody but who's doing any sort of mobile advertising or targeting uh you know whether it's for retailers or brands themselves or what have you i mean you need to be uh using some sort of data source like this yeah. um, you know to make it just more effective and and and, and more targeted to what you're trying to reach so Absolutely. whether it's place iq or whoever it, it's uh you know the as you say these partnerships just make sense yeah they do jump tap partnering with place iq i'm pretty sure that this you know, place iq will be partnering with a lot more people as well uh, sure with what they're doing all right fourth and last story it's a big one it's a big one when you when you uh when you consider who we're talking about here um, especially when we're talking about somebody uh, named Katerina Fake. For those of you who are in the Web 2.0 world, you know Katerina as the founder of Flickr, who was sold that was sold to Yahoo. The founder of Hunch that was sold to eBay. So she's got a great track record. She has launched a brand new product called Pinwheel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, amazing track record. Um, you know, and and Pinwheel is still in, in private beta, so you can't really uh, everybody can't get on this just yet. But I'm sure uh, if you know the right people, you can. Uh, sort of like Pinterest. Um, and, and it's not us. And it's not us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> although I'm sure Katarina can hook us up. Yeah. Anyhow. Um, yeah. So what what is, what is Pinwheel? Pinwheel is um, a system for taking photos and attaching them to physical places and leaving digital notes in, in the world effectively is how it's described. So it's, um, you know, you, you could basically leave a little text message along with the photo. It could be a memory of, you know, your experience in a place, you know, some interesting fact about the place. So in some respects, it's like uh, this great little company out in New York we've talked about before, Broadcaster. Yeah. Um, we're, but, you know, whereas theirs is audio based, uh, messaging, this is, you know, uh, photo plus, uh, plus some other, um, context around it. So interesting. 
She's uh, she's certainly got a good uh, a great track record. Having having exited uh, both of her companies mm-hmm. to two large, I mean, she she created basically the photo sharing world uh, around Flickr, and uh, really um, was a pioneer in Web 2.0. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, that there's a lot of interest in what she's doing here with Pinwheel. Um, and and uh, you know what? Do we need another network like this? The way they've described it, and I'll read directly, it says that it's uh, it's like food spotting meets Foursquare meets Instagram. And, yeah, and uh, but it, it's, it's, like, it's like color, right? I mean, yeah. this is what color was supposed to be as well. Um, you know, also a great track record that raised a gazillion dollars because of the great track record, you know, Bill Nguyen and, and, and company yep. over there. And what's happened to color? They've changed their color. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, well, they have. I mean, they, they transformed themselves into a Facebook uh, photo uh, sharing application, and, right. and uh, which is kind of a, a fraction of what they had aimed to be. Right. And and you know, there there are some there are some great companies that are out there that are that are trying to do the same thing. That social side of photos, like Pic2 is an is a is one of these mm-hmm. companies, and uh, I mean, uh, you know, you can find a lot of these guys on on Tether uh, long form interviews, but. You, there's a lot going on in this space, and I think that you know part of what we looked at at the beginning of the year was the consolidation <coughs> of some of these things. And, and right. uh, you know, there can't be a thousand or ten thousand photo networks, location-based photo networks. Uh, I just don't think that that's going to work. But there's going to be a hundred, and and, and, he, and even the Pinterest of the world. Like, I mean, you know, I think there's a lot of challenges with these models too. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, there was the big article that came out this past week. Somebody went and uh, I can't remember who did, who put the article out, but somebody went and looked in in minute details at the uh, privacy policy for Pinterest, and uh, and when they scanned through it, basically the policy says that whatever you upload photos wise to Pinterest, they have the rights to basically sell, distribute, do whatever they they, they choose with. And I, and I was talking to somebody at Yahoo, uh, I won't say who, but I was talking to somebody at Yahoo about this earlier this week and they were basically saying look you know we're quite concerned about this kind of thing as a company because you know what about the digital copyright issues what about all these things you know first of all if you upload something you don't you don't have the rights to to begin with you know what happens to that what happens there right i mean uh, so there's a lot of issues there around these kinds of things and i think all of these photo services uh in some respects are are subject to that kind of uh um you know thinking and and um you know, potential uh, legal issues. But you know, there's there's also been a, a, a world of, of photo sharing that has been going on for quite some time. There's companies that have been out there that are that are sure. soliciting, uh, you know, amateur professional photographers to go up and, and sell their wares through through these sites. And I don't want to mention them all here, but because um, I'm open for them sponsoring this if they want, but I'm not going to push them push people to it. But but when right. when you start to think about those guys, they're the established companies, and and just like we talk about the established data owners, the geo uh, location data owners that we're, are starting to get into the game now, Garmin and a couple of those guys. Um, when you start to think about sharing photos and sharing location, it's a natural extension for the trusted brands that are out there already. Sure. So do we need, uh, you know, are they just sitting back and seeing what other companies are doing before they decide to go out and start doing them it themselves? And and I would expect them to come into this space at some point. And, and because they've got the trusted relationships, they've got the, the policies down place, down pat, and uh, you have to basically approve or be approved in order to be able to submit your photos. Like Pinterest is... Pinterest is a, is a as a could it be a flaming star? You know, could it just could it shine so brightly for a few months and then disappear like every other kind of trend that we're seeing or, or blip that we've seen? Who knows? But there are some uh, discomforting things that we're starting to see with those yeah. kind of services. So well, and also th- with things like Pinterest, I mean, there's you know, Facebook could create one of those tomorrow. I mean, yeah. it's. Doesn't mean you know, that doesn't mean that it'll be better. Doesn't mean I mean, they will. Doesn't mean it'll be you know as uh, nearly as uh, as well uh, you know sort of adopted or or you know the appeal uh, that Pinterest has at the moment. But anyways, yeah. Well, you got guys like Gary Vaynerchuk using Pinterest. Uh, I mean, will will they use something like Flywheel for their social side, or or are we still stuck on Instagram and Path and those kind of services that are, are much more mobile friendly, much more ingrained right now, much right. more investment that's already been done to them? I don't need another social network. I just don't. I can't keep up with the ones I got. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. And email. Somebody just solve email, and I'd be a happy guy because I can't keep up with that either. Anyway, 
So, but the thing is that Katarina Fake has a an incredible track record of exiting. Absolutely. So there's no there's no doubting it. So um, what she's doing, you got to watch out. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely worth a look. Pinwheel. Pinwheel. It's pinwheel. What is it? Pinwheel.com. Something like that. Mm, Hang on. It It is. It's pinwheel.com. P i n w h e e l dot com. Wow. How long ago did she have to buy that domain? I want to know. I don't know. What, what, what did she pay for it? I don't think she's hurting for cash. Anyways. I just don't think so. Those are the four stories that we, that Asif thought were important. And I think that I, I, I tend to agree. It's uh, Google launching uh, Latitude leaderboards. Toyota doing their extreme uh, limited edition RAV4, Black RAV4 campaign in Belgium. Uh, JumpTap partnering with Place IQ And the uh, launch of Pinwheel. Those are the four stories you should know and there a little bit of insight as well i, I got up before we jump into our guest this week uh which is damian Patton, uh, the founder of banjo i'm really interested you know every year at south by southwest and it's coming up in a couple of weeks everybody's over at mobile world congress now um every year at south by southwest there seems to be a trend that happened somebody's launching or there's a bunch of companies that launch remember last year it was about the group chat yeah and then the year before, it was much more about the location services. Um, and then before that, it was Foursquare. And before that, it was or Goal, and then it was Foursquare. Um, well, any ideas? Any any thoughts about what we're going to start to see this year? I mean, I don't, I don't. I, but I, I just, I'm, I'm interested. It is going to be much more of the same. It's going to be photo gonna sharing. See, I don't know if it's photo sharing. Um, I, I think we're going to see a lot more mobile payment stuff going on uh, this year. Lots of interesting experiments and testing, I think. Um, I, and I, I know of lots of companies who are going to be down there kind of running little experiments here and there, whether it's NFC or not. But, uh, yeah, I, I think payments is going to be big. Yeah, you know, I can absolutely see payments being huge. I can also see, um, you, you know, services that, that tell you what's going on inside of a bar, those hyper-local mm-hmm. applications that, uh, you know, Lenny Rachitsky's company. I think that these are the yeah. kind of things that we're, we're going to start to see. But, um, I, you know, it's always interesting how they converge on South by Southwest. And what happens there is, I don't know, they all get together six months before. They all start working towards South by Southwest as a launching platform. So we'll, we'll be keeping our eye on what's going on down there as well. Um, For sure. All right. Those are the five stories. Did I sat down new, earlier. Uh, phone this morning? Pardon me? Did you see the new Samsung phone that came out of uh, Mobile World Congress this no, morning? No, I didn't see it. Oh, yikes. Um, Tell me so it has it, a magnifying new, glass. New smartphone. New smartphone. Uh, I can't remember the name of it for like uh, I, I didn't bookmark it here, but new smartphone basically got you know the usual front and back cameras, but it's got a built-in projector, fifteen lumen projector in it. Oh my god! Yeah. Battery life seven seconds. <laughs> yeah, fifteen lumen projector built into a smartphone. Love it. Well, you know, and that's uh, I, I believe that that's the future of display. Right? When you, oh, for when, sure. When the, when the screens that we're using here are, become obsolete because you can display on anything, you can broadcast on anything. The only challenge is obviously uh, is consumption, battery consumption, um, yeah. which they haven't figured out yet. However, that's pretty cool. i got to check that out. Yeah. Wow. So it's called the Samsung Galaxy Beam. Beam. Yeah. And it's an Android phone, obviously. Uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Samsung yeah. Galaxy Beam. I'm going to have to check that out after the show. Yeah. Pretty cool. My goodness. Well, we're, but get used to it. This is what we're going to start to see. Definitely. All of these kind of, uh, you know, where they're throwing things against the wall to see what sticks. And uh, But I believe that projection uh, technologies on smartphones or, you know, small dongles or adapters that don't drain power but actually allow you to broadcast in full HD uh, from one of these smartphones, uh, I think that that's definitely a way that uh, that we're going to get displays yeah. everywhere. Say goodbye to the television. Yeah, it's a 15 lumen projector. It lets you project a 50 inch wide image on a wall. It's insane. It's insane. There you go. Love it. Well, I'm going to look for some video on that. Wow. The beam. Nice. The beam. Good name. It is a good name. All right. So, I, I um, speaking of hyper local, not. I don't know how to transition from there, but uh, I sat down with uh, earlier uh, this week with Damien Patton, who is the founder of Banjo. They just released their 2.0, version 2.0 of their product. And I don't know if you, Banjo is a is a highly, uh, basically it takes in all your social graph, all your location services into one application. And it's like radar. It's, uh, it allows you to uh, know when people are nearby and it creates a kind of a, um, um, 
a magic serendipity that happens as a result of this. So it takes in your social network from Twitter, it takes in Facebook, it takes in from Instagram, it puts them all together, mashes them all together, and it creates a, a great picture of who you are and all your friends. So you start getting alerts about when you're within, you know, a quarter of a mile of somebody, which is which is pretty cool. So, but the great thing is the, this interview will be up uh, this week, the whole thing. Damien is an incredible guy. Uh, he's an army vet. He's also uh, a NASCAR uh, mechanic, uh, a chief NASCAR mechanic. And he's also the founder of Banjo. Great story behind that. But this is a clip of, of this session that I, that I did with him where we focus on the technology uh, being the focus, the, the back-end server, the cloud stuff being the focus of Banjo, and the medium being mobile for now. Really interesting clip. Hope you enjoy this. But remember, the whole interview will be up on uh, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, if, if you're interested. It's a, it's a great, great, great interview. Fascinating guy. So here, here is Damien talking about his product, Banjo. This actually began uh, on the web. Uh, it didn't begin on mobile uh, when I came up with the idea. When I came home that night, I immediately went in and started programming it on the web um, because that's where these social networks lived. And to me, that's where the human interaction, that's where I discovered that I'd miss a friend, so that's where it must be. iOS was still uh, very new. The Android really hadn't uh, come into its own yet. Uh, and uh, obviously, BlackBerry wasn't really good at connecting people with social networks, right? Um, and so uh, as the idea matured, though, I then went on into, and realized that uh, as iPhone became uh, pop obviously very popular and widely distributed, the Android as well, and other devices, then you started having all of these great location-based uh, technology services come out, Foursquare, Instagram. And on and on. And what that did is it just enriched. Well, it, it did one thing. It fragmented more, right? Because now here's another social network i got to get on. But it started enriching the amount of information that was out there about my friends and other people I might want to hang out with and where they're at. And so it was a very natural progression to go from this idea and this about technology and move it into mobile because that's where we all live. We all are mobile, right? Yeah. I mean, many people don't even have a, a phone at home anymore except your mobile device. And so... Of course it has to be there, right? I mean, that's we might forget our wallet at home, but we're not going to forget our mobile device, right? right? In your life. So, exactly. And so that's why um, and so that's why we see Banjo's focus is about showing the technology through mobile because that's where these these moments of you walking by and finding out that Bruce is playing with the Dropkick Murphys or me finding out that my friend from Desert Storm is is in the same airport or me or me finding out that some other important event while I'm traveling is, is ha taking place that I want to take part in, that's only going to happen uh, right now on a mobile device. So that is the future uh, of human connection and making it more rich is using these mobile devices, the technology that's already out there, and bringing them together in a meaningful way. So you, you step away. You, you, you come home from that experience. Uh, you know, you're back in Vegas. You start, you start building this, uh, this site. Um, you build it first in the web, and then and then eventually it moves into mobile. Talk about now, today. Like, dive right into the product a little bit. We, we've talked about a little bit about the background. There's an inference about what it does. How do people use this today? Give, you know, it, it solves the problem of being in a location um, where somebody else is that you want to connect with. Sure. What else does it do? How, how do people use it? So, um, so several. I'll give you several big use cases, um, and all very different. So one is obviously. The reason I can uh, I did it was because of the connection engine that it was going to build. Yeah. I didn't want to miss out any more on important people that were near me as I traveled through life uh, without having an opportunity to connect. Um, and so that's what it does. So as I'm here in Redwood City right now, or if I travel to New York, Banjo is always looking out for all of my friends across all of my social graph, right? My Twitter friends, my Facebook friends. There's big fragmentation, and when they're doing something near me. It's letting me know, hey, you and your friend are near one another. So that's that's huge, and we hear about that. I mean, um, I don't want to say dozens of times every day, but it's it feels that way. We hear all these great stories about family members, you know, that might be cousins or an uncle or uh, these these college roommates or people who used to play sports together or traveling even abroad, and they happen to be in the same place as one another. And who would have known? But Banjo told them and created that opportunity. Outside of that, a lot of other cool ways banjo is being used, uh, big sporting events or concerts. We all can't be at the Super Bowl um, in Indianapolis this year, 
But with banjo, banjo lets you go to the Super Bowl. It lets you be right there. It lets you not only experience the people that are tweeting out something, but the people that are sharing photographs, the people that are checking in, talking on, on Facebook. And it allows you to engage right there in the moment. And media and the news has been using it to report on events and stories when they can't be there, uh, whether it's a weather event, uh, whether it's uh, – I saw something in the paper outside of Philadelphia – that the reporters were using it, there was a bomb scare at the mall, and they wanted to talk to people at the mall while it was happening. They used Banjo, went to the mall, saw all the different people on social networks that were there, used Banjo to connect with all these people, and they were able to break the story before the police even came out with it. So um, Banjo is used in, in, in all these different ways, but the, the core of it, if we get back to it, it's about this connection engine, right? It's about us not missing out on the things that are important to us. And so even though these scenarios are very different, if you will, um, it all does circle back to that, and, and that's, the, that's the core value of what we're doing. And that is Damien Patton, the founder of Banjo. One of the things that didn't happen in the story, we just, they were banging on the window when we were actually finishing up the interview, and uh, he got a little distracted, and we finished that session, and it was because that moment, Apple featured Banjo as the product of the week, and he said that uh, downloads went out of the world at that point and they were banging on the window and it was a total distraction we didn't know what it was but we found out when we got off camera that it was in fact that apple had made it one of the featured products and uh, and i think that this is an interesting company to watch banjo b-a-n dot j-o go and take a look at it do you, do you use yeah. banjo uh I, I played with it a little bit on and off um yeah it, it is a pretty cool product though um and i would Definitely recommend people take a look. Yeah, yeah, like UI on it is really good. It's really good, and and uh, you know I, I've I've used many products like this before, but uh, for some reason they have they just haven't stuck. And um, so I'm I'm using Banjo now. I'm going to give it a go. But uh, fascinating guy. So hopefully uh, hopefully you found that of value. And that's it. Those are our guests. On to some funding yep. and uh, M, M A talk, shall we? A little bit. We got a little bit. Do we want to start with Groupon? Sure. The vacuum that is Groupon? <laughs> well, they have lots of money to buy things. So. Well, that's right. They do have, or do they have lots of money? They're buying well, a bunch of small companies, which is interesting. And they're buying some companies that enable the hyperlocal immediate buy, don't they? They do. Two, two acquisitions this week. Two acquisitions, yeah. The first one, Hyperpublic. Why don't we talk about that one? Um, yeah, so Hyperpublic, um, you know, th this is really, you know, sort of like our Place IQ discussion. This is about data, um, and this is about helping Groupon understand a little bit more about the, you know, the, the local um, data around, you know, where they're pushing deals to, who these people are. You know, um, you know, the more we know about areas, parts of cities, neighborhoods, towns, you know, and the local data that comes out of that, the better – you know, Groupon is is positioned in in order to you know push relevant content, push relevant deals to these places, and so this is a you know Hyperpublic's a small company um, that uh, that they picked up to to basically help them hone in on uh, on uh, put you know making the service offering that much better you know from from a local perspective. And it, it makes sense for them, uh, but it's a small company; it's a small buy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I didn't see a number, but these guys aren't a big company. So. No, no, no. I, I, I wouldn't. Um, I think that that's their mo. They they buy hyper local kind of thing because they picked up a second company, which yep. was uh, Kima Labs, uh, run by uh, Blake Scholl, who I've yes. had the great pleasure, awesome guy to sit down and talk about his his product Barcode Hero, which is basically a barcode scanner. Yes, and it's a it's yeah, and they also a, have TapBuy too. Yeah, a commerce platform basically. Yep. And they uh, so they picked these guys up, and and um, Kima had raised less than uh, less than probably around three quarters of a million dollars. So I wonder what the acquisition was, or the value was. But this is, I think this is smart, but um, small again for Groupon. Well, these these are talent acquisitions. I, I would I would say in both cases, you know, with a little bit of technology coming along for the ride. And, and um, you know, I think the interesting thing here for me is, is you know, I, I talked right at the beginning of the year about eBay and all the great uh, capability that they have, and we're just waiting for it to get all assembled and put together. Um, but in some respects, you could say, you know, here's Groupon, we, we, we've got deals, we understand that piece of it. Now we've got a little barcode scanning capability, we've got a commerce platform of some respects that we can build out maybe, we've got 
you know, like you got to remember, Group Groupon's. I don't know what the percentage is, but the, you know, the biggest part of the workforce is people sitting on the phone, you know, drumming up deals. Yeah. Um, you know, they probably haven't had you know really great uh, technical capability in terms of building further further building out the platform. You know, they were going wide with the platform, so they're trying to acquire bits and pieces of that. I think uh, through deals like this. You know, you know what? It's it's funny because I think that they're afraid, and this is just my feeling about it. And so, don't take this to the bank. Don't buy or sell your stock based on this. But I'd sell it. Um, is that they're afraid that people are going to when people are going to wake up and it's going to be soon and realize that Groupon is just a coupon company. Mm. Right? It's just you're just a it's just a coupon company. That's yeah. all it is. It's a coupon company with a return of uh, you, you know with a sixty six percent. Um, what is that? unhappiness rating from clients that they are not going to return for a second time. So they're, they're looking at this and, and they're trying to bolster their technology and their f services and what they're doing. They're changing their business right in front of us here, going from a group buying to a real-time buying uh, coupon company right. because people are, they know that people are going to wake up and say, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah. You're a coupon company. Right. And then, and then the bottom is going to fall out even more. And uh, this industry will be right set again and we're going to realize every even you know living social they're coupon companies until they change their business model so maybe this is part of that uh but i like blake i like his company i'm very happy for the yeah. guy um, um and uh anytime you exit at any point in time it's a it's a badge and 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 hopefully he's uh he's got a little bit of um a little bit of equity in that that he can he can take to the bank here's hoping yeah, and I suspect that, uh, as you said, they, they they hadn't raised a lot of money. Uh, this is uh, Kima Labs we're talking yeah. about, but yeah. um, you know uh, they, they must have had some pretty good revenues going because I was looking at some of their customers the other day, and they've got some pretty big names on the on the roster, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, uh, Gap, Old Navy, um, Groupon was a customer themselves. Target, uh, I mean, so you know, getting getting names like that on board, you know, for your on your on the mobile commerce side, and you know, you know, payments. You know, card, all that kind of stuff, um, isn't easy. Uh, I would say, especially a company like a Target, um, you know, not easy to do. And so, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there were some good things going on there. Groupon, you know, good on Groupon for recognizing it. Uh, and we're going to see many more of these smaller acquisitions by Groupon. Um, Agreed. And 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 I would say that they they're going to be like this. They're going to be talk technology acquisitions like this where they're bringing great people who understand the business and they're also going to be localized Groupon clones where there's a, a, a market and some people that they're going to come with it. So it's so Groupon buying Hyper Public as well as Kima Labs this week. This week. It's a typical week in Groupon. Cash everywhere. Spending all the time. Second story is um, this is a I, I you know I, I, an interesting one. Loyalize was, uh, was picked up uh, this week, by Function X for for five million bucks. Yes. Yeah. Another no, guy is... that gets out of companies very well. What's that? This is another guy that gets out of companies very well. Yeah. So uh, his name is Roy Moore. And uh, it, yeah, I mean it's an and Smirin. Uh, what's his name? Smirin. Um, Shahar. Shahar Smirin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. interesting company, but let's talk about this. Five million bucks. Five million bucks. Um, Function X. I'm not all that familiar with these guys, no. other than I know that they're uh, they're guys who get the entertainment industry and uh, you know sort of come out of uh, TV and Viacom and MTV and 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 that that whole world. So um, uh, it was founded by a guy named uh, Bob uh, Sillerman, who's the guy who uh, uh, did American Idol. So you know these guys totally get that world uh, apparently function x despite i don't know them and i don't know if you know them rob but nope. apparently these guys have a one billion dollar market cap so i understand uh, that i mean they were uh, they they popularized uh, sms voting in north america with with american idol right? yeah and yeah, it correct. really fits well i guess with what loyalize was doing which was their kind of engagement offering for television watchers so yeah. it's a good fit. So Loyalize was is a social TV audience kind of thing, right? You know, in some respects, 
the world of you know where get glue and miso and and some of these guys are that we've talked about before so this idea of checking into content um you know sort of c connecting with tv while you're watching it second screen third screen whatever you want to call it um you know whether it's gaming polling surveying sms uh, you know there's a lot of different ways to do that but you know branded activities around what's happening on television points you know some sort of loyalty activity you know kind of engagement so um you know ob obviously uh function x totally understands this world and and loyalize is, is in this world so i think this this is a good fit it sounds like it's a good fit yep it's a, it's a perfect fit really if you believe that the future of television is going to be through the smartphone yeah and, yeah who yeah. doesn't exactly who doesn't no arguments there uh last uh, last one was was this scan a company called scan which yes. is uh, you can find them at scan.me who are basically are QR code makers in a very elegant way uh, raised 1.7 million dollars for basically creating Q QR codes yeah and should uh, we just be silent for a minute about this and wonder why yeah yeah I, I, I... well <laughs> it's like was that was the buzzer I, you know I, buzzer. we should do that, that we should that do... was that's the QR code right there we just heard it um, uh, enough said anyway. scan dot me gets the buzz right scan me gets the buzz wow. um, yeah so 1.7 million um, you know I'm not a big uh, big supporter of QR codes I mean I think there's a, a place for them in print still um, but it's Billy a short term Cyrus home movies or movies yeah it's a short term thing I think um, you know we're not gonna see QR codes you know two years from now it's just not gonna be here um, you know but these guys are, are, are one of the players I guess in the space they've got 10 million people who have their app or, or create QR codes with them uh, or scan QR codes, I should say. Uh, I don't know if they necessarily are creating them. It's a global company. Apparently, they operate in 77 countries. Um, good on them, I guess. If you can get 1.7 million to do QR codes, um, peace. But didn't they raise it from? Like, they raised it from some big guys. Like, uh, yeah. let me see. I got the list here where it's like they raised it from Menlo Ventures, Google Ventures, Charles River Ventures. Uh, Start Fund, Social and Capital Partnership, Transmedia Capital, Ludlow Ventures, and and uh, uh, Naval Ravinkat of Angel Pool. Yeah, and so everybody put in a hundred grand. It, yeah, like seventeen guys put in a hundred grand, but but still, <laughs> yeah. they managed to raise it from from some some big guys in the valley, and, and which I don't get. You know, it, you know, Google Ventures is in that list, and and like yeah. Google's the guys that come out and said the QR code is dead, right? Yeah. So it's, whatever. Well, they're also the same company that just came out with leaderboards, right? So one hand doesn't talk to the other, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of like you know, Back to the Future, right? It's exactly. For them, right? Okay, we're gonna start right. We're gonna start over again. All yeah. right. Well, I well, don't know they, what they else to say. Saw, they saw the Star Wars movie come back out again, yet right. again, in 3D now. So they're, they're like, okay, well, you know, I guess we'll give QR codes another run. Well, yeah, we did second chance, and look what happened yeah. with uh, you know, it's like Jar Jar Binks in 3D turned everybody off. Nobody likes that movie. It's terrible. I don't know what else to say. I try. I, I sign up for a Scan.me account, and I don't get it. Uh, you know, I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand this this play. But again, I, I'm not. Um, I haven't raised 1.7 million dollars for a, a fruitless idea. Um, but Scan.me just did. Good on them. Hey. If you can take it, we'll take it. We're, we're only looking for 100 grand. Yeah. If you really want Google to invest Ventures. in a silly idea, Google Ventures, we're here. Yeah. Exactly. I'll make QR codes for $1.7 million. I'll do much more for $1.7 million. So those are the three area, the three uh, funding and acquisition news. Groupon has bought two companies, Hyperpublic and uh, Kima Labs. Loyalize was acquired at, for about $5 million. And Scan.me uh, m raised a million, million seven. It was a good week. But now we got one last thing, and this could take all day to discuss. And I promise it won't, but... It won't. A resource where there's a flurry study that said time spent on mobile doesn't match the ad spend. Take it away, Asif. So first of all, I mean, we we need a study to tell us that. Honestly, <laughs> like, I mean, time spent on mobile doesn't match the ad spend. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so I'll, I'll just I'll read right from this thing and and uh, share some numbers. Yeah. Um, so here it goes. 
The mobile advertising and analytics firm Flurry says that the mo most imbalanced medium, most imbalanced, I like that, imbalanced medium, when it comes to ad spending versus time spent at 1% compared to 23%. So what it, what they're saying there is is that and I love how I love how they use all these big words to make it look like it's like you know uh, they're getting paid by the word I guess. Dun dun dun. Da, da, da. Um, so basically, we spend twenty three percent of our time on mobile, yeah, viewing, but only one percent of the advertising dollar is going to mobile. Dun dun dun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what else can I say about that? Um, what what else you want to say about this? It's it's uh, so they, they contrast they can... that. They say okay, well, print print advertising right. gets twenty nine percent of the ad dollar, but only six percent of the time we actually look at print ads. Yeah. You know, so here and they also talk about the web, right? Which is uh, sixteen yeah. percent versus twenty twenty two percent. So it's uh, you know that's uh, that's almost even. It's almost even. It's almost one to one. Yeah, but it's um. In one breath, they have destroyed mobile by comparing mobile, web, and print. They are three different mediums, three different purposes. And they're jamming them all together saying, listen, it should be a closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. And the, the, the reality here is that banner ads and the whole concept of an eCPM does not compute on a mobile device. We shouldn't even be having this conversation. This, no, it should, I, 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 this should be just I, I, a very clear indication that that it's not working and it will never work. Yeah, you you can't take the same metrics and move them over to mobile. You it can't. just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. It's not a, it's not an impression or a click through or whatever um, you know in the in the way we we do CPMs on online. Uh, I completely agree with you. And and I, and I, and while yes, we're spending lots of time on this platform, um, you know, this is about experience and engagement and so many other things other ways to measure uh, effectiveness then you know I saw an ad and I reacted to the ad um, it's so arbitrary yeah. and the fact is that we're probably spending most of our time sending text messages or responding to email uh, that is not something that they can turn into revenue they, they just simply can't put ads in there and less and less time spent um, you know doing the things that they can actually monetize so this number isn't even accurate or I could be making a phone call, right? These, sure. These, or I could be using it as a navigation unit, right? So I'm not going to... So yep. what, what are they talking about here? They can't even quantify what we're using it for. We, we do. I probably spend more time than the average person, you do as well, on your phone, doing the things that we do every day, which is business. But how do they quantify how people are spending that 23%? And to say that it's only 1% uh, of budget is going to that, it's because it's the wrong mechanism. Well, it, it, it's, like, it's like saying that, um, you know, that, you know, the 23% of the time that we're spending on our mobile, we should be, we should be spending 100% of that 23% looking at ads. I know. It's not going to happen. It's just, it, like, right? like it's, that's not why we have a mobile phone in our pocket. It's not to sit there and look at ads. Well, they, they also, no, exactly. And you're even talking about, um, you know that women ages 25 to 34 generated high eCPM on mobile of $12.92. It's like that's wasted money. Like if if we're talking about eCPMs uh, in a mobile capacity, yeah. we are losing this battle when it comes to the uniqueness and the personal component or personal piece that is the mobile device. It isn't about banner ads. It isn't arbitrary banner ads. It's not just pushing information out to me. It's not a broadcast mechanism. It's a it's a personal tool. It's exactly why I look at this and I say that, you know what, we don't get it. People who are advertising or creating ads for mobile applications that aren't personalized, that don't have an engagement strategy, that are just display ads that go to your website, should not be a part of mobile. These guys, whoever suggested that as a campaign or as a sales tool or as an awareness making tool, should just not have a job anymore. right? Click-throughs, I love that. I get into a banner, and every once in a while I click through to just do a test, and that's all it is, and it takes me to their full-fledged website, not even a mobile-enhanced website. Mobile like, it's terrible. Or, or it, you know, it doesn't even give me to, like, it doesn't even get me to a local version, a local store, like a, a national chain like Canadian Tire. I click through, and it's like, and that's in Canada, Canadian Tire, and it brings me to their global CanadianTire.ca website. 
Uh, and I could be around the corner from a Canadian Tire, but they're not doing it. They don't get it. And this stuff just drives me crazy. So don't look at how you can fix this. Look at doing an alternative way of generating, uh, you know, interest from your clients. It's just one to twenty-three. Doesn't matter if it's ten to twenty-three or twenty to twenty-three. It's just the wrong medium. Let's not shoehorn banner ads onto the mobile device. Right. All right. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. Drive me crazy. Okay. I don't know if you can tell. Ah, that's it. All right. That's it. That's a good way to end. Uh, but I will include the link to this if you are so inclined to want to know exactly what we're talking about. You know, it's it's good to know this stuff. But please, if you are recommending banner ads, stop. Think. Do something unique. Do something that's strictly mobile. You'll have better results. That's it. Episode 66. Finished with a flurry. Finished with a flurry. Get it? Finished with a flurry. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so anything, you're going to be in New York this week and then, uh, just one trip and that's it. Just one trip back, uh, doing a conference here in Toronto, uh, later in the week. And yeah, that's, that's it. Sweet. Pretty, pretty good week. I'm, no, I'm looking forward to it. Not bad at all. Same time zone for a CFCon, which is very no. good. It okay. is very good. Last time we did this last week's episode, obviously he was in London. Now we're, we're back in the same province. Feels good. Leafs still sink, stink. Senators won. Oh, don't, don't get me started on the Leafs. All is right in this world. Tomorrow's trade deadline day. Yeah, exactly. Which means what? Which means we're we're sellers. We're, we're going to be selling. Yes, one hundred percent selling. We're selling. We're not buying. We're selling. You are selling. Well, we yeah. are selling too. If you think that you want to be a part of this, we'd love to have you. Come on, sponsor the show. We'd love to be. We'd love to have you a part. We uh, and and uh, certainly reach out to a C for I, a C at the LVMA dot com or on tether at raw at uh, gmail dot com, in order to be able to see if you want to be a part of this. We'd love some feedback. We really appreciate the fact that you guys watch or listen. The feedback that we do get has been stellar. Really appreciate it. Activity views. If you love this show, just do us a favor, recommend it to somebody. Push it out that way. We'll, we'd love if you could do that if you like the show enough to actually push it out to the people that you know but give us some feedback yeah. and we'll see you next time for episode for sure. 66 for sure and just one one last uh, point from me yeah. uh, just, there was a tweet that just came in a little while ago from uh, a group called City Recess so it's, it's cityrecess.com uh, uh, a company called Clearbox Media uh, thanks for the feedback um, you know s saying that you love the podcast we appreciate it um you know, we, we always we always like the uh, the encouragement. So thanks very much to cityrecess.com. Boy, do we ever. I love that. Would you yeah. like us to read your message on this show? Yeah. Our mothers will listen to it. It's announcements? No, just kidding. That's exactly it. Right. <laughs> we'll do some singles announcements. Nice. Reach out on tethergmail.com or Asif at the LEMA. You can reach Asif at Asif R. Khan on Twitter or me at Rob Woodbridge. Until next time, which will be episode number 67. Thank you very much for watching and listening wherever you are. See you next week. See you, Steve.